For two decades, we have been placing satellites into various orbits around the Earth. These tiny man-made moons have quietly revolutionized our lives on the surface of this planet. Through communication satellites, we are able to pick up a telephone and call anyone on the face of the Earth. We watch sports, then news events, anywhere in the world live as they happen. Weather satellites monitor constantly varying atmospheric phenomena. It is estimated that over 100,000 lives and billions of dollars have been saved by our ability to forecast major weather events such as hurricanes and floods. Resources have been discovered by viewing space photographs and new methods of resource management have been developed. Navigation satellites have made it possible to pinpoint ourselves on the Earth accurately within a few feet. Even in the most remote locations, navigation satellites have made it possible for long-range, high-altitude flights and ocean-going ships to arrive precisely at their destination. Advances in space technology. We already take them for granted. And we have only just begun. The use of space to advance Earth technology has become routine. Now we are building a way to get into space on a regular, reliable, and economical basis. The Space Transportation System, better known as the Space Shuttle. It can lift payloads into orbit around the Earth. Payloads up to 60 feet long, 15 feet in diameter, and weighing up to 65,000 pounds. The Space Shuttle is our transportation into a new era of technology. After launch, the orbiter section of the shuttle will go into a circular orbit above the Earth. The orbiter is designed to handle a wide variety of payloads and missions. Among the most obvious is the placing of satellites into Earth orbit. Once the shuttle is in orbit, the payload bay doors are open. The crew uses a remote control manipulator arm to extract the satellite from the bay and place it in orbit. During this procedure, checks are run on the functioning of the satellite. If malfunctions are detected, the satellite can be fixed in orbit or returned to Earth for repair and relaunching at a later date. A television system on the manipulator arm and in the payload bay assists the crew visually during deployment. Until the advent of the space shuttle, each satellite had to be custom designed and fitted to one of the many launching rockets available. They had to be lightweight, extremely reliable and complex, increasing costs of design and construction. With the capability to carry larger, heavier satellites into orbit economically, these costs are being reduced. A new generation of satellite is being developed. The multi-mission modular spacecraft is basically a satellite structure with interchangeable modules to fit numerous mission requirements. The spacecraft modules include communications and data handling, 
attitude control, propulsion, power, and a control unit. By adding items such as propulsion and solar panels for electric power, the multi-mission modular spacecraft can be used for 75% of the satellite missions scheduled for the 1980s. Should a module need replacement due to malfunction or for desired modification updating, an orbiter can rendezvous with it, capture it, and replace the module in orbit. Another satellite is the Long Duration Exposure Facility. This is a 30 by 14 foot open aluminum structure carrying experiments to be exposed to the weightlessness, vacuum, solar radiation, charged particles, and micrometeoroids of the space environment. Passive, reusable, and low cost, the long duration exposure facility will test biological specimens, meteoroid impact material, solar cells, optical surfaces, thermal coatings, and other non-active experimental devices. Every six months, the shuttle will return to the orbiting satellite and take it back to Earth for retrieval of experiments. During this mission, a similar satellite will be left in orbit with another set of experiments. Another major space shuttle activity will be the launching of missions into geosynchronous orbits that is, orbits of about 23,000 miles altitude, in which the satellite remains over a given location on the Earth, as well as high-altitude orbits and unmanned probes to explore the planets, the Sun, and deep space phenomena. This will require that the shuttle place in orbit not only the probe or satellite, but an additional attached propulsion stage. Initially, a solid fuel rocket engine will be used. The orbiter will leave the payload in a parking orbit, then move a safe distance away for the firing of the propulsion stage engine. Using this method, communication satellites can be put into orbit to stay over the same point on the Earth's surface. Interplanetary missions, such as a Jupiter orbiter probe, will be launched from Earth orbit. The placement of satellites into orbit and launching from orbit will be just one of the space shuttle's jobs. For other types of missions, the orbiter will carry in its payload bay Space Lab, a pressurized laboratory module developed by the European Space Agency. Attached to the crew module by an airlock tunnel, Space Lab will provide a shirt sleeve environment in which experimenters can work. Special pallets can be carried with Space Lab on which experiments and instruments are mounted which need direct exposure to the space environment. Each Space Lab is designed to fly 50 times within a 10-year period. Taking advantage of the zero-gravity condition in orbit, experiments will be performed on the formation of materials, the production of highly pure chemicals, crystal growth, and other processes some as yet only vaguely imagined. Zero gravity and the nearly perfect vacuum in space make possible the creation of new products and the improvement of products already in existence, such as new and lower cost pharmaceuticals, metal alloys, and crystals for electronics. Orbiting hundreds of miles above the Earth, the space shuttle itself can be used as a platform to study our planet. Advanced and long-range studies will be made in the areas of agriculture, mineral resources, petroleum location, oceanography, weather, and other Earth sciences in orbits ranging from low inclination to polar. Looking outward, scientists on Earth will use orbiting telescopes to observe our own sun and the planets and the distant stars and galaxies without interference from Earth's atmosphere. A 100-inch orbiting telescope is now under construction. It will see 14 billion light years, perhaps to the edge of the universe. 
seven times farther than we have seen using the largest Earth-based telescopes. Crew members wearing spacesuits can venture outside the pressurized modules to service the instruments used in these studies. For work outside the payload bay and away from the orbiter, crew members will use a manned maneuvering unit, somewhat like the one flown and tested on Skylab, a backpack with cold gas thrusters to move through airless space. The shuttle can carry payloads for a wide variety of missions. Its versatility will open space not only to more United States government agencies, but to foreign governments, educational and research institutions, and to industry. Not just on a massive, multi-million dollar scale, but for low-cost projects, such as the Getaway Special Program. For very low cost, Small, simple experiments will be placed on board the shuttle on a space-available basis. Already, users have reserved space from major industries to research foundations to universities to individuals. Even high school science projects are scheduled to go into space. And this is what is planned for today. What will the future bring? To extend shuttle mission durations, on board as well as orbiting solar power stations will be available to supplement the orbiter systems. New methods of construction for building in space are being devised. With these techniques, large structures can be erected in space. We can build orbiting solar power stations which can beam the unlimited power of the sun by microwave to stations on the Earth. There, the microwaves can be transformed into electricity. Large manned space stations can be constructed in orbit to meet the needs of scientific research and future industry. For that is the mission of the United States Space Shuttle, to carry a wide variety of payloads into orbit for research and the industrialization of space. Five hundred years ago, European explorers set sail for the New World. They were followed by voyages of colonization. And neither those who rode the fragile ships nor those who sent them could envision what would result in today's world. Now we stand on a similar threshold. And what might we imagine? New scientific knowledge, improved technological applications, economic advances, all contributing to our security and well-being. The future of planet Earth is waiting for us through the continuing missions of the Space Shuttle.